حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تروا أن الله سخر لكم ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وأسبغ عليكم نعمه ظاهرة وباطنة ومن الناس من يجادل في الله بغير علم ولا هدى ولا كتاب منير Respected brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته As we pointed out that Luqman was a wise man and he gave advice to his son he gave several very important pieces of advice to his son. And as we know that the Qur'an, although the Qur'an is telling us what Luqman tells his son, but in fact, the audience of the Qur'an is anyone who's listening to the Qur'an. Anyone who's reading the Qur'an, that is the audience. So this is a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to every single one of us in general, and specifically to the people of Mecca, to the pagans of Mecca who were idol worshippers. So the Qur'an is trying to send a message to the people who are in Mecca who are idol worshippers through the words of Luqman al-Hakim, Luqman the wise man. Now, in order for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to persuade someone to be thankful, to believe in God, to pray, to enjoin the good and forbid the evil, and to carry out the act of the manners that we discussed last night. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do to persuade us to be mu'mineen? To persuade us to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this in the Qur'an several times by reminding us of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. You find throughout the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of the blessings, the blessings of life, the blessings of family, the blessings of everything that we have and everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed at the disposal of the human being. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored the human being and dignified the human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of all of these blessings so that we are reminded to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that we are reminded to appreciate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Every single blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you in your life, this is a reminder for you to turn to Allah. This is a reminder for you to worship the one and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's sad that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to remind us of the blessings that He has given us so that we remember to thank Him, so that we remember to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our connection with God is for our own good. In ahsantum, ahsantum li anfusikum wa in asatum falaha. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to remind us to be connected with God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to remind us to be believers, to be good people. Isn't that sad? Imagine your parents who loved you and cared for you and did so much for you. But then when they ask you for a favor, you don't listen to them unless they remind you of what they have done. Isn't that sad that they would have to remind you? Didn't you see... All the, all the favors and the blessings that they had given you. Similarly, we do not see, or we do see, but we ignore the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in our lives. We are drowning with the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given us our health, our body. Every breath that we take is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your security Everything that you have should bring you to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and appreciate Allah for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you.
This is why Allah says in the Quran, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا If you sit and try to count down the blessings and the favors of Allah upon you, you will never be able to count them. You will never be able to say, okay, God did this and this for me and therefore I did this. No, because we are drowning in the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given us so much. Where are you going to start counting from? Every breath that you take is a gift and a blessing for Allah subhanahu, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you. However, Allah points out a sad reality. And that is, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ Only a small group of the ibad, of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, though everyone is a servant of Allah. وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ Out of the people, only a small group of them are truly thankful. They thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know when we remember? We remember when that blessing is taken away from us. We don't thank Allah for our health. But once we are losing our health, once we see that we are losing that power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, whether it's sight or hearing or speaking or walking or going out or any, anything, once we see that we are losing that, then we start appreciating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. Once your kidneys start failing, once you start having heart problems, then a lot of people, they remember, I didn't thank Allah all that time that my kidney was functioning properly. My liver was functioning properly. My whole body, I was able to go out and run outside. Now, for some people, once they can't, that's when they remember. We have two blessings that we oftentimes forget. According to the hadith, ni'matan majhulatan as wal-aman. Two blessings that people take for granted. Two blessings that people do not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. Because they don't even look at it as a blessing. They treat it as something that they have to have. Something that they need to have. And it's something that they just were born with. What is it? Ni'matan majhulatan. as wal-aman. Your health? How often... How often do people thank Allah for their health? People complain when they have lost their health, your health, and wal-aman, your sense of security, sense of safety. Today when we're in our homes, when we can't leave our homes, we begin to appreciate the outside. We begin to appreciate things that we used to do when we used to leave the house, things that we used to do out of the house. So sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs to remind us. And this is not a good thing that Allah has to remind us. We need to be reminding ourselves of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah in order to convince people to be believers, to be mu'mineen, to not associate a partner with Allah, Allah reminds us. What does Allah say? Allah says in the Quran, in verse 20 of Surah Luqman, أَلَمْ تَرَوْا أَنَّ اللَّهَ سَخَّرَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَأَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعَمَهُ ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنَةً And have you not seen how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed everything under your control? سَخَّرَ لَكُمْ Everything is under the control of the human being where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed this whole life under our control. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places the water and the air and the plants and the animals and the farms, everything, the rivers, everything is under the, under the disposal of the human being. Allah has placed, Allah has placed fossils and placed um, jewelry and gold and oil and every, everything is for the human being, for you to live a good life. For you, so to show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is honoring you. Allah has honored the human being and chosen the human being over all of the other creation and favored the human being. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ And we have honored the children of Adam. وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ And we have given you the ability to travel on land and in the ocean, on the land, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has places the ho- placed the horses and everything. And in the ocean, through the, through the boats and the ships, 
And of course, at that time, the people didn't know that they will, they will be able to travel through the air as well. But Allah gives us an example of Sulaiman, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was sakharna lahu riyah. Allah places the wind at the disposal of Sulaiman. So Allah says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ And we have given you the food that is tayyib, that is good for you, that is healthy for you. The food that we eat, it's good for us. Our body needs that nutrition. From every food there is a nutrition that our body needs. You have the vitamin C and the vitamin D and all of these, uh, the calcium and everything that is from the food that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed for us. Where are we going to get that from? We take that from the food, the protein and everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made available for us. وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ كَثِيرٍ مِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا And we have favored you over all of the billions and millions of other creation. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honoring the human being. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favor the human over other creation? It's because of one thing. It's not because of the power and the strength and the speed and, and the physical ability. Because you find some animals, they have a stronger physical ability than the humans. They have better eyes, they have better ears, they have better, they're, very, they're faster, their bodies are stronger. What is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored the human being with? That is the intellect. The intellect is the ability to choose between right and wrong. And it is your intellect that should guide you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah tells us, use that intellect that I have given you. Use it to have a better life and a better afterlife. So when Allah is reminding you of all of these blessings, your intellect should be able to see them. Your intellect should see that I have all of these blessings. Where did they come from? Who gave this to me? Who provided this for me? Who made uh, made us, you know, made all of these accessible for us? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَلَمْ تَرَوْا أَنَّ اللَّهَ سَخَّرَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ And then, وَأَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعَمَهُ ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنَةً And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with His blessings that are apparent and hidden. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran points out that the blessings of Allah, some of them are apparent, are, are visible, you could see them, you could trace them, and some of them are hidden. Some of them we need to be reminded of. Some of them you can't sense, you can't feel with your senses, but it's a blessing that's there. Try to think of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Those that are apparent, that you see immediately and you sense immediately. And those that are hidden. And the scholars of the tafsir of the Qur'an, the scholars of the Qur'anic exegesis, they give out many opinions as to what is the apparent and what is the hidden, the hidden uh, blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So some scholars, and these are all correct, these can all be correct, because these are all blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. They say that your body, the physical aspect, the physical dimension is the apparent blessing, and the spiritual dimension, your soul and your spirit, and your emotions, that is your inapparent blessing. Others, they say, it's your organs, the outside organs that you could see, and the internal organs. There's the internal organs, you don't need to, you don't need to be running them. You don't need to be awake for your heart to function. You don't need to be awake for your liver and your kidney and your stomach and everything internally to work. That's a blessing. That's a, that's a machine that's working nonstop that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for every single one of us. We don't have to be awake. We, we can't, you know, choose to just, you know, stop our heart from beating. That's life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. That's the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. In a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he tells Ibn Abbas, he tells him the apparent blessing is Islam, the religion of Islam. That's a ni'mah zahira. 
That's an apparent blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the Muslims Islam and the creation, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created and the sustenance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for every single one of us. Every single one of us. Allah created you and Allah also gave you your sustenance. Allah will not create you without providing sustenance for you. Look at the baby. As soon as the baby is born, you find that the milk starts kicking in in the body of the mother. Because as soon as you came into existence, your sustenance starts kicking in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for it. Once you get older, once you start teething, that's a sign that your body is ready to consume meat and other, you know, other hard foods. That's all the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the apparent blessings. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi says, and the, and the inner blessings, the deeper blessings, is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not expose you for your misdoings. When you do something wrong, Allah doesn't immediately take away the blessings from you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you an opportunity after an opportunity, time after time, so that you go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that God does not expose you, the fact that you are not caught and you are not exposed right away, that's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you. Imagine if you break the law outside. Maybe if the police officer sees you the first time, right away they'll expose you. Right away you're, you're going to get in trouble for it. But how many times have we disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah keeps covering up for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not expose us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful with us. This is a blessing from Allah. We have to thank Allah for that blessing. Do we thank Allah for that blessing? Uh, most of the time we don't. We thank Allah for what's apparent. For our health, for our wealth, for our children, for our families, for what we have. Yes, we thank Allah for Islam. But when Allah covers up for us, do we thank Allah for subhanahu wa ta'ala for that? This is one hadith. And another hadith from Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam. And this is another dimension of a blessing. And these are all correct. These can all be correct. He says that another blessing that we have, the apparent blessing is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He is the apparent blessing for all of the Muslims. He's a rahmah to mankind. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And then Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam, he says, and the unapparent blessing, نِعْمَةً ظَاهِرَ وَبَاطِنَةً The deeper, the internal blessing, he says this is the Ahlul Bayt and the Mawaddah, the love for the Ahlul Bayt In another hadith, Imam Musa ibn Ja'far al-Kadhim salam, the seventh Imam of Ahlul Bayt, he goes another dimension. He says the apparent blessing, وَأَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعَمَهُ ظَاهِرَ وَبَاطِنَ He says the apparent blessing is the apparent Imam, the Imam that you have access to. And the hidden, the internal blessing is the imam that is in Baghaiba, the imam that is in occultation. Imam al-Mahdi, ajjalallahu ta'ala farajuhu sharif He's a blessing for you and I. He's a blessing for all of the believers. He writes in a letter, he says, and you benefit from the hidden imam just as you benefit from the sun when it's behind the clouds. We benefit from the imam. But maybe we don't appreciate it. Maybe we don't thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe we don't notice it. But we do benefit from the imam. So these are the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of. وَأَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعَمَهُ ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنَةً And then the verse continues. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُجَادِلُ فِي اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ وَلَا هُدًا وَلَا كِتَابٍ مُنِيرٍ and there are some people that despite all of these blessings, despite all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them, they continue debating and arguing arrogantly with pride with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't want to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't want to submit to the laws and the rules of Allah. And they keep debating and arguing 
وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُجَادِلْ فِي اللَّهِ They argue in the matters of faith, in the matters of God. There is a lot of people that do that. Without knowledge, Allah says, بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ Without knowledge. وَلَا هُدًا And without a, a real guidance, without an imam that guides you, without a leader that guides you, وَلَا كِتَابِ munir And without a book of guidance. This is some people. Some people, they just want to quarrel. They just want to argue. They just want to fight. They don't want to submit to the truth, even though the truth is backed by logic. It's backed by your own senses. Your own senses, they see all of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> but some people, they don't. They reject the knowledge and the proper guidance and a book. Now, what does this mean? This means that those people who don't believe, they reject knowledge and guidance and a proper book. This means that the Qur'an is a book of knowledge, ilm, and a book of hidayah, guidance, and it is a kitab, munir, is it, it is a illuminating book that will light your path, that will show you the way. The Qur'an is the book of the truth. The Qur'an is the book of logic. The Qur'an is the book that wakes us up, that wakes us up to, it makes us pay attention to the realities. Don't you see, Alam Tara, Alam Tara, and Allah has Sakhara Lakum. You need to be reminded that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you all of these blessings. And Allah chose you, Allah gave you the intellect. You can see the blessings. The animals and the other creation, they submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But God gave you the intellect and gave you the ability to choose, gave you choice. And that's a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respects and has honored. The human being. So make the right decision. Make the right decision in your life. And don't be like those people who reject logic and reject the truth. Who are they? وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ اتَّبِعُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ قَالُوا بَلْ نَتَّبِعُ مَا وَجَدْنَا عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا أَوَلَوْ كَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ يَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَىٰ عَذَابِ السَّعِيرِ when you tell them, when you invite them, when they are invited, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمُ اتَّبِعُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ Follow what God has sent in the Qur'an. What do they say? قَالُوا بَلْ نَتَّبِعُ مَا وَجَدْنَا عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا No, we're going to follow the ways of our forefathers, the ways of our ancestors. And then Allah says in the Qur'an, أَوَلَوْ كَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ يَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَىٰ عَذَابِ السَّعِيرِ They want to follow shaytan. Because if, if you're not following the Qur'an, you're following your, your norms, which bring you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they say, these are the ways of our forefathers, idol worship. So Allah says, if shaitan is going, is leading them and calling them to the adab, to the torment, are they still going to follow? And this is what they say. They would always say, we're following our forefathers and we're following our ancestors. And this brings us to a very important topic, something that, is, that relates to us today, and that is cultural norms. Today, a lot of times people, you see them doing something that is illogical, something that is wrong, something that goes against the religion of Islam and against their values. You ask them why? They say, this is our culture. This is our norms. We have to do it. We have to do it. No, you don't have to do it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, use your intellect. Look at the signs of Allah, the favors of God upon you. And thank Allah and obey God for all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. And don't be like the pagans who used to say we're doing this. We're following idol worship just because our parents did. Today, people might not be following, might not be doing idol worship, but they might still be obeying their own cultural norms. Now, Culture is not always a bad thing. Islam is not against culture. But if that culture contradicts and it stands against the religion of Islam and values and logic and what's common sense, then that culture has to be stopped. Then that culture is wrong and it needs to be stopped and you need to change your ways. You find in some cultures, and a lot of people, they tend to blame their the, the cultural cultural practices on religion. You find in some cultures there is a sense of misogyny, hatred towards women. 
You find if they have a son, they'll treat their son in one way, but their daughters are treated in another way. They don't treat their sons and the daughters the same. There's misogyny and there is, there is mistreatment of women. Women are not treated with equality. This is a cultural thing. It's not a religious thing. But some people, they come and they try to blame religion on that. And you tell them why? They say, this is the culture. This is the way everything has been. No, this is not the culture. Islam tells us that we have to have the audacity to stand against cultural norms or the laws of hijab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed laws of hijab. But you find some people, they come and they say, no, 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 our culture, we're a family. Let the cousins get together. Let them sit together. It's okay if they're not wearing hijab from one another. Who said that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laws and our cultures have norms. We have to make sure that we choose what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for us. We have to make sure that we follow the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we don't say this is the way it's always been. This, this is our culture. Now, the Qur'an moves on and it depicts two groups, two groups of people. One group is the group that submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of the orders of Allah. And the other group is the group that does not submit. The group that after being reminded of the common sense, after seeing all of the signs of Allah, they choose to take the path that is wrong. The path that takes them astray. And Allah says in the Qur'an, Allah says in the Qur'an, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمُ اتَّبِعُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ قَالُوا بَلْ نَتَّبِعُ مَا وَجَدْنَا عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا أَوَلَوْ كَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ يَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَىٰ عَذَابِ السَّعِيرِ وَمَنْ Now, two groups. First is the group that, said, is the group that believes. وَمَنْ يُسْلِمْ وَجْهَهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوِثْقَى وَإِلَى اللَّهِ عَاقِبَةُ الْأُمُورِ وَمَنْ يُسْلِمْ وَجْهَهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ The one who submits their face to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does that mean? Your face is what represents you. Your face is, it represents all of you. So Allah here is saying, you have to holistically submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to submit everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ يُسْلِمْ وَجْهَهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ not only, submission by itself is not, uh, that's not all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects from us. We mentioned earlier that iman wa amal salih. إِلَّا مَنْ آمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا You have to believe and you have to good, do good deeds. So here Allah says, وَمَنْ يُسْلِمْ وَجْهَهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَهُوَ muhsin. And you also have to be a muhsin. You have to be a doer of good. You have to be on the path of righteousness. People have to see that you're a believer. Your iman has to be reflected in your action. And as we pointed out in the, in the advice of Luqman, he first talks about iman and belief, and then he talks about manners and good deeds. Because your faith is reflected from your, in your actions. وَمَنْ يُسْلِمْ وَجْهَهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنْ فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوِثْقَى Whoever does so, these two ingredients... Faith in God, submit holistically to Allah and be a person on the path of righteousness. A person who does ihsan, what happens? فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوِثْقَى This person is holding on to the best thing to hold on to, to the strongest attachment. بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوِثْقَى Holding on to something that won't fall apart. Imagine you're trying to climb a ladder and the ladder falls apart. You're trying to hold a rope and the rope falls apart when you're holding it. You need to hold on to something that's solid. Something that has a strong foundation. What is that? That is your faith in Allah. That is the acceptance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. That is accepting the whole message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Especially in terms of faith, my dear brothers and sisters, we have to make sure that our faith is solid. You have to have a solid foundation in terms of your faith. Just as you have, you have to have a solid foundation in a building, and the, the higher the building is, the more you want to make sure that the foundation is solid. Because you don't want to fall apart, you don't want to crumble. Well, what about a foundation that's supposed to connect you with the heavens? That's your faith. 
What about a building, an institution that's supposed to connect you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bring you closer to Allah? Don't you want to make sure it has a solid foundation? This is why your faith and your belief, it needs to be based on conviction. Even Islam, our usul al-deen, the belief in God, the belief in the day of judgment, the belief in the prophet and everything. I don't believe because my parents believe. The Quran says, those people, they said, Inna wajadna aba'ana. We saw our parents like this. The Quran says, don't follow your parents. Follow based on conviction because God has given you the best gift and that is the power of the intellect. Use that intellect and build a foundation and let that foundation lead you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what are you believing in? Are you a believer or a non-believer? Are you believing because of a foundation or are you choosing not to believe because of just, you know, you saw someone doing something you didn't like and you choose not to believe? You need to have certainty. You need to be able to back what you say with proof, with certainty. You believe in Rasulullah, that is a foundation. But Rasulullah, he came and he said, I want you to accept everything. The Quran says you have to accept everything the Prophet says. And when Rasulullah appointed Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, that is also a foundation. That is the Urwat al-Wifqa. That is holding on to the full religion. In one of our tafasir, by the name of Tafsir al-Burhan, by Sayyid Hashim al-Bahrani, he mentions a hadith and in it he says, this is in a, it has a Sunni source. He says that Imam Ali ibn Musa al-Rida alayhi salam, the eighth Imam of Ahl al-Bayt, he narrates from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He says, Rasulullah says, وَسَيَكُونَ بَعْدِي فِتْنَةٍ مُظْلِمَةٍ There's going to be a fitna. There's going to be a calamity that is very dark. People are going to get lost in it. مُظْلِمَةٍ and نَاجِي مِنْهَا مَنْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوِثْقَى the one who is safe is the one who holds on to the urwat al wuthqa The one who holds on to the rope, to the strong rope that is strong, that is holding on strong. فَقِيلَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَمَا الْعُرْوَةُ الْوُثْقَى They tell Rasulullah, O oh Rasulullah, what is that urwat al wuthqa What is that thing that we have to hold on to? فَقَالْ وِلَايَةُ سَيِّدِ الْوَصِيِّينَ He tells them, it is the wilaya, the authority of Sayyid al wasiyin the master of the awsiya, the master of the vicegerents after the Prophet. قِيلَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ سَيِّدُ الْوَصِيِّينَ They tell Rasulullah, who is Sayyid al wasiyin He says, Amir al mumineen So they tell him, Ya Rasulullah, وَمَنْ أَمِيرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Who is Amir al mumineen he tells them, Mawla al-Muslimin wa imamuhum ba'di. The leader, the Mawla of the Muslims and their Imam after me. Qila ya Rasulullah, wa man Mawla al-Muslimin wa imamuhum ba'duk. Qala akhi Ali ibn Abi Talib. He tells them, my brother Ali ibn Abi Talib is the Imam of the Muslims and the Mawla of the Muslims after me. He is the one who Rasulullah appointed on the day of Ghadir when he says, Man kuntu mawlah, fahada aliyun mawlah. So the allegiance of Amir al Mu'mineen is Urwat al Wuthqa. And then Rasulullah says in the Quran, and then Allah says in the Quran, Waman kafar, first, Waman, waman yuslim, whoever has submits, this person is holding on to the Urwat al Wuthqa. وَإِلَى اللَّهِ عَاقِبَةُ الْأُمُورِ And to Allah are the endings of everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the endings, the final say. And then, وَمَنْ كَفَرْ فَلَا يَحْزُنُكَ كُفْرُهُ وَإِلَيْنَا وَمَنْ كَفَرْ فَلَا يَحْزُنُكَ كُفْرُهُ إِلَيْنَا مَرْجُعُهُمْ فَنُنَبِّئُهُمْ بِمَا عَمِلُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ and whoever woman kafar, فَلَا يَحْزُنْكَ كُفْرَ Whoever does kufr and blasphemy and rejects the truth, then don't let that person's blasphemy make you sad. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he used to be saddened when, he used to be saddened when people did not believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, فَلَا يَحْزُنْكَ كُفْرَ Don't be sad when people are not believing. 
And this shows what kind of a person Rasulullah was. He wanted everyone to be guided. And when someone was not guided, Rasulullah would become sad. But Allah reminds the Prophet, فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُسَيْطَرْ Remind people. You are just a reminder. You don't have to control what's in the minds and what's going on in people. You don't have to force religion upon people. You're just a reminder. And then Allah says, إِلَيْنَا مَرْجِعُهُمْ فَنُنَبِّئُهُمْ بِمَا عَمِلُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ Everyone is coming back to us and we will show you everything that you did. Your whole life is going to be playing as a movie in front of yourself and in front of the angels, in front of the witnesses. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you. The ones who did not believe, Allah is going to have the hujjah, the proof in front of them on the day of judgment. Everyone will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah says in the Quran, نُمَتِّعُهُمْ قَلِيلًا ثُمَّ نَثْضَرُّهُمْ إِلَىٰ عَذَابٍ غَلِيظٍ you see some people, they look comfortable in this life. They look happy in this life. They look like they have everything that they need in this life. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, don't be fooled by those who are living comfortably but they don't believe. And they should not fool themselves because they're comfortable but they're not believing. No. Allah says, قليلاً, We're going to give them joy for a short period of time نُمَتِّعُهُمْ قَلِيلًا ثُمَّ نَثْطَرُّهُمْ إِلَىٰ عَذَابٍ غَلِيظٍ And then we will push them and then they will have to go towards the severe torment because they rejected the truth, because they rejected all of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Bani Umayyah, and I'll conclude with this, the Umayyads, they persecuted Amir al-Mu'mineen, they waged a war against Amir al-Mu'mineen Muawiyah took the authority from Imam al-Hasan and he poisoned Imam al-Hasan. And then Yazid killed Imam al-Husayn. Bani Umayyah, they were in the wrong. They were doing wrong. They were oppressing. All Muslims testify that they were doing wrong. And whoever does not see that what they were doing is wrong is fooling themselves. What did Bani Umayyah do? Bani Umayyah, they were in power. They had power of propaganda. After killing Imam al-Husayn, after persecuting Imam al-Hasan, after waging wars against Amir al-Mu'mineen, they came and they made people believe that as long as they have power, as long as they have authority, then that means God is loving them and God is allowing them because God is keeping them in power. So therefore, God is favoring them. And because Imam al-Husayn was killed, because Imam al-Hasan, he, he abdicated power, because Amir al-Mu'mineen was dealing with struggles, and he did not have a firm grip on power during the time that he was ruling, that means God did not like him. God did not want him to choose. That God did not want him to rule. And on the day of Ashura, they came and they said that. After they brought Sayyidah Zainab and the family of Imam al-Husayn, Yazid, he kept saying, look what, look what happened to your brother Hussein and what happened to me. God chose me over Hussein. Sayyidah Zainab, she recited a verse in the Quran. A verse that is similar than, to this. نُمَتُّعُهُمْ قَلِيلًا We're going to have you enjoy this life for a very short time. ثُمَّ نَثْطَرُهُمْ إِلَىٰ عَذَابٍ غَلِيلٍ Then they will be taken to the severe, severe torment and punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Zainab recited this verse. وَلَا يَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ خَيْرٌ لِأَنفُسِهِمْ إِنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ لِيَزْدَادُوا إِثْمًا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مُهِينٌ Don't let the, those who do kufr and blasphemy think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is blessing them and favoring them. إِنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ We're giving them لِيَزْدَادُوا إِثْمًا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مُهِينٌ I'm giving you to test you. And if you fell in this test, you have the power, you have money, whatever you have. If you fell in that test, then your punishment is going to be much more severe. So Allah says that those who, those who are in the wrong, sometimes Allah will give them more. And because Allah gives them more, then they will fall more. And Allah will punish them much more severely. So now we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us 
from those who are on the path of the righteousness, on the path of the good. نسألك اللهم وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم يا الله يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم أدخل على أهل القبور السرور اللهم أغني كل فقير اللهم أشبع كل جائع اللهم اكسو كل عريان اللهم اقضي دينا كل مدين اللهم فرج عن كل مكروب اللهم رد كل غريب اللهم فك كل أسير اللهم أصلح كل فاسد من أمور المسلمين اللهم اشفي كل مريض اللهم سد فقرنا بغناك اللهم غير سوء حالنا بحسن حالك اللهم اقض عنا الدين وأغننا من الفقر إنك على كل شيء قدير وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات نهدي ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلوات